Don LaGreca with Greg Buttle. It's the divisional round of the playoffs. I like to say that wild card weekend gets rid of the riffraff, the teams that maybe don't belong. When you get to the second round of the playoffs, everybody's legit because you're either taking on teams that had buys, that had great regular seasons. You know those are good teams. And then you have teams that won playoff games, and you don't win a playoff game unless you're pretty good. So good. goodbye to New England, that riffraff, Cincinnati. They weren't goodbye. riffraff before they got beat, were they? No, <laughs> they, well, they, oh, no. You know, smoked two weeks in a row, and now we've got the divisional round of the playoffs, and this is fun. We've got four great games, doubleheader on Saturday and Sunday. We'll get to the Jets in just a second, but let's look, take a look you know, at the action on Saturday, you know, and let's take a look at the Saints and the Cardinals, uh, two teams that can really – Ring up the, the points. They ring it up, and they ring them. They, they ring the points up in the passing game, Don. But this is what these two teams can do that a lot of other teams can't. They can run it in the red zone. These are teams that you just don't worry about their passing game. You worry about how well they run it. And you talk about New Orleans with Breeze, and you talk about Arizona with Warner. Well, think about it, folks. Those guys are pieces to a great puzzle that they have there. Can their defenses play better than they did the previous games, especially Arizona? I don't think so. I love New Orleans. And you know what? If you were on the fence about Kurt Warner as a Hall of Famer, I think that probably put you over the fence because that was an amazing performance. He threw more touchdown passes than incompletions. It's unbelievable. Five touchdowns, no interceptions. That's good. I, I mean, you got to be kidding me. There is what was he? Uh, One ninety-five thousand <laughs> QBR. The guy, unbelievable. All right, now we go to the other game in the AFC, the Baltimore Ravens, who are feeling pretty good about themselves and kind of built like the Jets. They do it with defense. They've got a young quarterback. They went to the championship game last year, so a little bit more experience. They're taking on an Indianapolis team that really has not played a game with meaning in a month. Right. Uh, now, I love the Ravens. I really do. And, again, the Ravens are like a mirror image of what the Jets are. But if you take that one 87-yard run out of the game against the New England Patriots, that game's a little closer than you might think it should be. So if the Ravens are able to run the ball the same way, I would say to you, they have a chance. They took it right down. They lost to the Colts earlier in the season. They have the formula. They know it's about the red zone, folks. Can the red zone defense of the Ravens out Fox Manning? I think they might. How's that? You take the 83-yard touchdown run by Rice away, then it's 17 to nothing instead of 24 to nothing. What are you talking about? Well, the next play it was a forced fumble. Next play it was a fumble. Next thing you know is that you have these things that happen that you just can't be doing mistakes no, no, no. in a game. No, the Patriots are riffraff and the Ravens okay. dispatched them. And that's what you All do right. with riffraff. Riff raff. Yeah, Get absolutely. All right. Now let's go to Sunday. Everybody loves the Dallas Cowboys. They're the darlings of the NFL. Everybody's got them going to the Super Bowl. Meanwhile, the Minnesota Vikings, you know, things weren't going well for them. But then they got the medicine they needed in Week 17. Oh. The New York Giants coming to town, riff and they rap. whipped on the Giants. Speaking of riff rap, 44 to seven. So. Did the Vikings really get well just because of that game against a team that couldn't wait to hit the golf course? Geez, you know, that's a funny thing. I think they got well because they got their brains ready. They were able to get physically ready. They were able to take a rest. They were able to do things, Don, The teams that are trying to get buys get to do. And when you talk about a, a good football team, Minnesota does it all. They can throw it far. They can catch it, Barry, and they can... They have a tight end that no one heard of when he was with the Giants. Yanko, they've got a defense that can play. This is a good football team, and I think that the Dallas Cowboys find out how good the Minnesota Vikings are in a dome. Pressure on the quarterback, especially where getting to Favre. If where gets to Favre, it doesn't could be a long day for Minnesota. Doesn't touch Favre. Well, if they doesn't touch Favre, then I think it's a long day for the Dallas Cowboys. And now to the game, Saturday, Sunday, 440, San Diego Chargers playing host to the New York Jets. Wasn't that long ago, 2004. The Jets were an underdog going to San Diego on a Saturday night. Jets win in overtime. We were on the air till 4 o'clock in the morning. They also had a game earlier, uh, a few years before that. I think it was 2002. Jets were dead. Herman Edwards is going to lose his job. They go to San Diego, and they blitzkrieg the Chargers. So they've had some moments in recent years in San Diego. And can North Turner, who I don't think is the greatest coach in the world, get his team up, 11 straight wins, but also haven't played meaningful football in a while, going up against this great Jet defense? Well, you see, Don, you said it the best right at the end. This Jet's great defense. Throw history out the window, folks. This is a new year. It's a new play. You, you did, but, but you got to throw history out, Don. I mean, this is the playoffs. This isn't riffraff. This is about the highest scoring team in the NFL over 28 points. It's about a quarterback, Phillip Rivers, who's, who's 
ready for his due. 104 QBR, nine interceptions. He's never thrown three interceptions in a game. Did you know that? I did know. This team's undefeated in December for the last four years. This team can play offense. They have running backs. They can score. They throw it to their backs, 900 yards to their backs. I don't see how the Jets' defense – Oh, the Jets defense. Oh, that's the team that held quarterbacks to a below 60 QBR. And you want to talk about the top quarterbacks, the Mannings, the Schaubs, the Bradys. You talk, they held them to below 60 QBR also. So it's not like they just do it against anybody. On an average, the Jets defense plays well. Can the Jets defense, all things being equal, take care of Rivers? They've taken care of everybody else. I think they're going to do the same thing, Dom. Wait a second. I want to... <laughs> It's the Kool-Aid. It's yeah. called the defensive Kool-Aid, Don. You know what happens after you drink Kool-Aid, though? I don't know. Uh -huh. no. Oh, that's funny. No, we don't want to go down that road. But this is the best weekend of football. If you're a football fan, I mean, this is really it. Because then you get to the championship weekend, it's only two games, and then you got the Super Bowl, and nobody cares about the Pro Bowl. So there's a four games. This is the best weekend for an NFL football fan. You got four games. If you get two classics, you're thrilled. And you're going to get at least two classics because I really believe it. The Baltimore Ravens, 17-15 losers to the Colts. The Baltimore Ravens, 23-20 losers or 20-17 to losers to the Chargers. The Jets beat the Colts, but they were losing 15-10 to at half. This is about teams that can do it. The question will be, both of the quarterbacks against those teams, particularly, and I'm telling you, it's about Mark Sanchez and what he does with the football. Next week, it's championship weekend. We'll be here. Will the Jets? Riffraff.